Hi, this is Leo from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how to carry out a chi-square goodness of fit test. A professor using an open source introductory statistics book predicts that 60% of the students will purchase a hard copy of the book, 25% will print it out on the web, and 15% will read it online. At the end of the semester, he asks his students to complete a survey where they indicate what format of the book they use. Of the 126 students, 71 said they bought a hard copy of the book, 30 said they printed it out on the web, and 25 said they read it online. In the textbook version of this problem, there's parts A through E, but essentially what we want to do is carry out an appropriate test to see whether there is sufficient evidence that the professor's predictions are incorrect. So let's do that. So first we need to decide which test to do. We have one group of people, and instead of a yes-no, we have three categories. So we can't do a one proportion Z test because we have three categories. So we're going to do a chi-square goodness of fit test. We can set up our hypotheses. The null hypothesis says, yeah, it's fine. The professor's predictions are good. The alternate hypothesis that needs evidence says, no, those predictions are off. So our null claim says the professor's predictions are accurate, i.e. 60% purchase, 25% print, 15% online, and the alternate hypothesis says that the professor's predictions are not accurate. We can set our significance level alpha to 0.05. Here we have a table that has the observed number, so 71 purchased it, 30 printed it, and 25 read it online. And based on our null hypothesis, we have the expected percent that would purchase print and online. So those are given by our null hypothesis. Those are the professor's predictions. So we have the expected percent. We could find the expected number. So the expected number, well, we know that there's 126 students. That's given in the problem. Or we could add these three numbers up, and that will add up to 126. So out of those 126 students, we expect 60% to purchase it. So we just take 60% of the 126. So 0 0.6 times 126 is going to give us 75.6. Do the same thing for the print. That's going to be 25% of the 126. That's going to be 31.5. And do 15% of 126, and we'll get 18.9. OK, before we proceed, we can check the conditions for the chi-square goodness of fit test. We need one random sample and all expected counts to be greater than or equal to five. Um, the professor gave this survey to his students, so they're technically not a random sample. So we'll have to just assume that this sample is like a random sample um, in order for this test to really be meaningful. Our expected numbers, expected counts, are greater than or equal to five. And now our chi-squared statistic is going to be the sum of the observed minus expected squared over expected. So we can start calculating this. Here's our first observed number is 71, subtracted by its corresponding expected. Square that and then divide by the expected. And then do that for the other two terms as well. Our degrees of freedom is number of categories minus 1. So we have three categories, so that's going to be two degrees of freedom here. And now we can calculate this out or do a shortcut on the calculator. So I'm going to pull up a TI-84 here. Now, it's not that much of a shortcut because in order for this test to work, uh, we have to first enter the data. So if I try to go to stat tests and find chi-square GOF for goodness of fit, uh, let's see. You'll see that it asks you for the list, L1 and L2. So it's assumed that you already put information in there. So in order to run this test, we have to first enter the observes into L1. That's 71, and then 30, and then 25. And then we have to enter the expecteds into L2. Remember, the expecteds don't have to be integers, but the observes are integers. So 31.5, 18.9. Okay, so now we do have our observes in L1, expected in L2. So now we can go to stat tests, scroll down to find chi-square GOF. There we are. Enter. 
We do have those. The DF we have to enter manually, and that was 2 because it's number of categories minus 1. And now calculate, and we get our chi-square value of 2.3 and our p-value of 0.313, so we can record those. And now this p-value is big. It's bigger than alpha, and so we do not reject 8 sub O. If we do not reject 8 sub O, we do not have evidence for 8 sub A, which is to say we do not have evidence that the professor's predictions are inaccurate. So these observed values are within the realm of chance variation from those expected percents. So we do not have sufficient evidence to say, oh, those professors, the professor's predictions are clearly inaccurate. Well, that's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.